Hey class, I'm gonna do my best to describe these notes via video um, and hopefully you can follow along. So this will go with section 3.4a, it's solving quadratic inequalities. So first thing you need to do to solve a quadratic inequality is to solve the quadratic equation. So uh, remember the quadratic equation will have two solutions and a quadratic inequality will have a range of solutions. Kind of like the equation um, x equals three has one solution and the inequality x is greater than three has many solutions. So it's kind of that idea. So first thing we need to do in example one here is solve the quadratic equation. So you have a few choices. You could do the quadratic formula. Um, you could do the complete the square, or you can solve by factoring. And I always check to see if it's factorable. So a times c is negative six, and that has to add up to b, which is negative one. So I can find two numbers that multiply to negative six and add up to negative one, that's negative three and two. Since it's just x squared, it'll be x minus 3 and x plus 2. Because remember, it's just x squared, negative 6, and then 2x and negative 3x. So x and x, 2 and negative 3. Then to finish solving, you set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve. So I would get x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. So those are my solutions to the quadratic equation. To find the solutions to quadratic inequality, it's going to be a range of solutions. So I'm going to put those values on a number line. So if I draw a number line, and I need to have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So I have to have these two values on my number line. And if you remember back to when you graph inequalities, the less than symbol means that you have open circles and equal to symbol would mean you have closed circles so I have an open circle at 3 and an open circle at negative 2. In fact those are actually the solutions or the x-intercepts so those are your x-intercepts so if I thought about this as a parabola this parabola would open up so I'm going to draw that and that's where it would cross the x-axis at negative 2 and 3 those are my x-intercepts then if you remember from shading inequalities or graphing linear inequalities, we would test a point to see which way we shaded. Do we shade inside this parabola or on the outside? So we want to test a point. So that's what I'm going to do here. But I'm really just concerned about the x values. So I'm going to test an x point, and 0 is always the easiest x to test. So I'm going to test the value for x equals 0. Plug that back into my original equation and I'm going to get 0 squared minus 0 minus 6 is less than 0. So is negative 6 less than 0? Yes, that's true. So 0 is a solution, which means that my solutions are going to include 0. So if this was on a coordinate plane, you'd shade inside the parabola. On the number line, it's just the x values between negative 2 and 3. So the solutions, then, are the set of values of it'll be a compound inequality between negative 2, x is between negative 2 and 3, and remember our inequality always faces or points to the smaller number, so x is between negative 2 and 3. So x is greater than negative 2 and x is greater than 3. I use the just the less than symbols and greater than symbol because my original one wasn't equal to, so that's what I use there. So that's my final answer. So this kind of example 1b just kind of shows you, again, if you were to graph on a coordinate plane, x squared minus x minus 6 is less than y, it would look like this. You'd have a dashed parabola, and you would shade in the inside of the parabola because 0, 0 was a solution. So for the x values, here it means that the x is true between those two values between negative 2 and 3 so that just kind of helps you visualize it a little bit as well 
the end. <clears throat> Example two. So first thing you need to do is solve the equation, the quadratic equation for x. So I'm going to solve by factoring if I can. So a times c would be numbers that multiply to 6 add up to negative 5. So that's negative 2 times negative 3. So this factors to x minus 2 times x minus 3. Finish solving for x. x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals 2 and x equals 3. So those are the solutions to the quadratic equation. Those are also my x-intercepts for my parabola. So if I plug those in, like 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to have a, since it's equal to this time, you're going to have a closed circle at 2 and a closed circle at 3. And then you need to decide, in a quadratic inequality, there are multiple solutions, not just, not just the two. It's a range of solutions. Are they less than two and greater, or greater than three, or is it between two and three? So that's where I use a test a point idea. This parabola would open up again. Those would be my x-intercepts. I'm going to test a point. Is it going to be inside or outside of that parabola, the shading? So you can always test x equals zero. That just happens to be over here this time. So x equals 0. So 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 6 greater than or equal to 0. So is 6 greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is true. So that means on this parabola you would shade all this outside, which means on the number line it would be all the values to the left of 2 and to the right of 3. So as a compound inequality it would look like this. x is less than 2 Oh, it'd be equal to, since our original is equal to, or x is greater than or equal to 3. So this is an or inequality. So less than or equal to 2, or greater than or equal to 3. Example 3. So first thing you need to do is solve the quadratic equation, which means it does have to be equal to 0. So subtract 4. So it's going to be 3x squared plus 11x minus 4. 3x squared plus 11x minus, minus 4 less than or equal to 0. So I just set it equal to 0 to solve for my x-intercepts. So a times c this time would be 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Multiplies to negative 12 adds up to 11 for b. So that would be negative 1 and 12. So it is factorable. So if it's factorable, you can do it either method that you've been taught. Um, if you're using the box, which I think that most students are having the most success with, the 3x squared and the negative 4 go here and here. So 3x squared and negative 4. And then the numbers that you get here go in the diagonals as like 12x and negative 1x. So those are your diagonal numbers here. If you're not doing it with the box, then you're just saying to get 3x squared, I need a 3x and a 1x. And then I need to figure out on the outside and the inside, I need to get my diagonal numbers. So you need a negative 1 and a 12 when you multiply those together. But once you have your box made, it's easy to figure out the greatest common factor. Like 3x squared and 12x, I can take out a 3x. Then 1x and 3x is just an x. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 4 gives me 12x. And x times negative 1 gives me negative 1x. And negative 1 times 4 gives you negative 4. So your factors are x plus 4 and 3x minus 1. So here 3x minus 1 gives you the negative 3x, or wait, no, nope, that wasn't right here. That doesn't work. Um, the 3x has to go with the 4 to give me the 12x, and x goes with negative 1 to give me negative 1x, and those two give you 11x. So either way, you get the same answer. 
Then set each of those equal to zero, and you get x equals negative four. Set this one equal to zero, you have to add one first, and then divide by three, and get x equals one third. So then if we put those numbers on our number line, I'm going to start with negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. One third is going to be right here about. Um, based on the less than or equal to sign, they're both going to be closed circles. So a closed circle at negative 4 and a closed circle at one third. Then you just need to decide, are we going to be inside or outside of this quadratic function, which makes a parabola. Um, I can test zero. So if I test the point x equals zero, and you can either plug that back into the original or this one. It doesn't matter which one you go back to. If I go back to the original, I'm going to get 3 times 0 squared plus 11 times 0 less than or equal to 4. So is 0 less than or equal to 4? Yes. So that means that I will be between these two values. So your final answer, you write the x in the middle, and then the 1 third, the negative 4, you always write the lower one on the left side, and then the arrows point to that. They always point the same direction. Um, then it's equal to, since we had closed circles and the original problem was equal to as well. So it basically says that x is less than or equal to one third and x is greater than or equal to negative four. It's between negative four and a third. So that's my final answer for that problem. All right, one more here. First, get it equal to zero, so it would be 2x squared minus x minus 3 on both sides to get the equation equal to zero. Then I'm going to take that inequality and solve it for x by factoring if I can, which most of them I've chosen are factorable for you to practice this. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and b is negative 1. So two numbers that multiply to negative 6 add up to negative 1, be negative 3, and 2. So 2x squared and negative 3, then negative 3x and 2x gives me my outside would be 2x here and x here. Then x times negative 3 is negative 3x, and 2x times 1 is 2x. So this will factor to 2x minus 3, set that equal to 0, and x plus 1, set that equal to 0. Here you have to add 3 and then divide by 2, and we get x equals 3 halves, or subtract 1, you get x equals negative a half. So those are the solutions to the equation. The solutions to the inequality will include those and a range of values. So if I put those numbers on the number line, so we have negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And 3 halves is actually 1.5, so it's right in the middle here. It's just greater than, so they should be open circles at negative 1 and 3 halves. And then you can test a point, so if I test x equals 0, I'm going to plug it in this time to this equation here. So I get 2 times 0 squared minus 0 minus 3 greater than 0. Is negative 3 greater than 0? No, all negative numbers are less than 0. So this is not true. So not a solution here, which means that the outside of the parabola would be what you shaded. So it goes on the outside of those two numbers. So my answer would be x is less than negative 1, not equal to because it's an open circle, or x is greater than 3 halves. All right, it was a little bit tricky to explain via video, but hopefully that was enough for you to catch on. Thanks for watching.